geography motions of the motions of the earth earth's inclination and rotation all planets have different types of motions similarly the earth also has two types of movements namely rotation and revolution rotation is the spinning of the earth on its own axis the earth's axis of rotation is tilted at an angle of about 23 and a half degree with respect to the perpendicular line of the earth's orbit it is this inclination of the earth's axis of rotation that causes days and nights of unequal duration contrary to this if the earth's axis of rotation was perpendicular to the plane of the earth's orbit then days and nights would have been equal all over the world that is 12 hours each of daytime and nighttime when a part of the earth faces the sun the area gets lighted up the edge of the sunlit hemisphere which forms a circular boundary separating the earth into a lighted half and a dark half is known as the circle of illumination This is also the edge dividing the daylight from the night. The shape of the earth is referred to as a geoid. The orbit is the elongated part of the planet around the sun. The sun is not at the perfect center of the elliptical orbit. As a result, the earth moves closer to and further away from the sun. in its elliptical orbit on the 3rd of january the earth reaches a point that is nearest to the sun and this is known as perihelion on the 4th of july it is the farthest from the sun in the elliptical orbit and this is known as an aphelion it is because of the rotation of the earth that days and nights occur if not one portion of the earth would always experience day and the other half would always remain in darkness thus the combined effect of the earth's orbital motion and the tilt of its axis are twofold that is days and nights of unequal duration at different latitudes and occurrence of different seasons as we move towards the poles the effect of inclination goes on increasing another effect of the earth's orbit is the longer days and shorter nights that we experience during summer as summer gets over the duration of days goes on decreasing the sun is almost vertically overhead at noon time during this time the sun rays need to cover only a shorter distance to reach the earth and so they are more intense inclination of the earth inclination of the earth the difference of the earth's inclination can be experienced in the mornings and afternoons since the sun rays fall in a slanting position in the morning sunlight is not intense during this time while it is very intense in the afternoon when it falls in a straight line 
in the orbital path the maximum inclination of the northern hemisphere towards the sun occurs on june 21st on this day the sun rays reach their northernmost point at 23 and a half degree north during this time at the north pole the days are longer and the nights are shorter during this time the opposite occurs in the southern hemisphere the maximum inclination of the southern hemisphere towards the sun occurs on december 22nd and the sun rays reach their southernmost point at 23 and a half degree south hence on the 22nd of december the south pole experiences longer days and shorter nights these two extreme northernmost and southernmost positions are known as the summer solstice and winter solstice respectively as we go towards the poles the effect of inclination goes on increasing beyond the tropic of cancer 23 and a half degree north and the tropic of capricorn 23 and a half degree south the sun never shines vertically overhead at any place the variation of the duration of days and nights from the equator to the poles and the variation of the duration of days from one part of the year to another occurs in rhythmic precision at the equator sun rays fall vertically so there is only one long season in the equatorial regions with days and nights of almost equal duration throughout the year at the equator the days are 14 minutes longer than the nights all through the year the sun rays fall straight on the equator on march 21st and september 23rd causing days and nights of equal length not only on the equator but throughout the world these two days are called equinoxes earth's revolution and seasons the revolution of the earth occurs in an elliptical orbit as a result there are four distinct and extreme positions of the earth on 21st march 21st june 23rd september and 22nd december seasons are related to these four positions the seasons are summer autumn winter and spring there is only one hot summer season all through the year at the equator while the tropics have alternating summer and winter seasons the subtropical region have three distinct seasons while there are four distinct seasons in the temperate zones the frigid zones have short summers and long winters maps maps cardinal and intermediate directions with the help of directions we can locate an object or a place on the map accurately it must be remembered that on a map north is towards the top south to the bottom west to the left and east to the right side these four directions are also known as cardinal directions most of the maps have an arrow that points to the top with the letter n written above in addition to the cardinal directions there are four intermediate directions also namely northeast n e southeast s e southwest s w and northwest n w 
essential features of a map and conventional symbols one of the most important features of standard maps is that they are always drawn to scale the scale of the map is the relationship between the distance shown on the map and the corresponding distance on the ground for example 1 km on the ground may be shown by 1 cm on the map that is we can say that 1 cm on the map is equal to 1 km on the ground the map scales can be shown in different ways statement of scale representative fraction linear bar or graphic scale all standard maps mention the scale that is used at the bottom of the map with the help of the statement of the scale of the map distance on the map can be easily read maps can be drawn into two types of scales there are small scale maps and large scale maps the difference between the two is that 1 cm on a small scale map represents 100 km on the ground while 1 cm on a large scale map represents 100 m on the ground when maps of continents and countries are drawn a small scale map is used whereas the smaller areas like a village etc a large scale map is used conventional symbols that are adopted by the international convention are used in drawing maps maps neighboring countries of india neighboring countries of india the member countries of the sarc south asian association of regional cooperation movement include afghanistan bangladesh bhutan india maldives nepal pakistan and sri lanka our neighbors in the northwest are afghanistan and pakistan while china nepal and bhutan are another neighbors we share our eastern boundary with bangladesh and myanmar whereas sri lanka and maldives lie to the south of india the park strait separates sri lanka from india india's distant neighbors include Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan in Central Asia and Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand in the Indochina region. The glaciers in the Himalayas are the origin of many rivers that flow through the Indian subcontinent. The river Indus makes a U-turn when it reaches one of the high peaks of the western himalayas the mount nanga parbat 8126 meters from there it flows through ladakh into pakistan the river sangpo or the brahmaputra takes its origin from mansarovar lake near mount kailash at namcha barwa 7756 meters this river takes a u turn and flows through arunachal pradesh and assam before joining the ganga in bangladesh <laughs>